Fascinating Olympic Facts The ancient Olympic Games began in Greece in 776 BCE and were held every four years until 393 CE. It wasn't until about 1,500 years later, in the mid-1800s, that the Games were revived in Greece. But the Olympics didn't become the event we know today until 1896, when a French historian named Pierre de Coubertin had the idea of making the Games international and founded the International Olympic Committee. Medals weren't always a part of the Olympics. Giving medals to winners is a practice that began in 1896, and between 1896 and 1904, the top prize was a silver medal. The youngest person that has ever competed in the Olympics was Dimitrios Laundras, a 10-year-old gymnast on the 1896 Greek gymnastics team. Lighting the Olympic torch does not involve a match. It is lit using only the light of the sun and a special mirror. At various times, the Olympics have included such unusual events as a swimming obstacle race, a tug of war, and live pigeon shooting. The gold medal is not made of gold. It's actually 92.5% silver with a covering of 6 grams of gold. The marathon is an event named after the run of a Greek soldier, Pheidippides. In 490 BCE, Pheidippides ran from Marathon to Athens, about 26 miles, or 40 kilometers, to deliver news about the Greeks' success in a battle against the Persians. Running through the mountains and rocky land was extremely difficult. After Pheidippides arrived in Athens and delivered his news, he fell down and died. The first modern Olympics in 1896 included a race of 26 miles, 40 kilometers, called a marathon, to commemorate Pheidippides' run. Because the Greeks originated the Olympics, the Greek team always leads the procession of athletes during the opening ceremony of the Olympic Games. They are followed by the other teams in alphabetical order. The hosting country goes last. Dropping sports from the Olympics is not uncommon. In fact, many popular sports have been dropped through the years, including rugby, golf, baseball, and softball. Adding a new event can only happen if another one is dropped. After two years of training, we're finally at the regional skating competition. How does it feel, Barry? Actually, not so good. I'm not sure I'm up for this. What are you talking about? What if I mess up? You're not going to mess up. You've been practicing day and night. You have your routine down pat. Skating in front of those judges is going to be a piece of cake. Now, I want you to take a deep breath and exhale. Trust me, 
you're going to knock their socks off. Do you really think so? You bet. I have total confidence in you. You have the guts and the talent to win this competition. There's no doubt in my mind that you can do it. Okay. I feel better. I'm psyched. You'll be on in a few minutes. You should get your skates on. Where are your skates? My skates? Oh, no. I left them in the car. The Olympic Games are usually a celebration of the finest in athletic ability. But every so often, an Olympic athlete becomes famous not for being athletically gifted, but for not being athletically gifted. Take Eddie the Eagle Edwards, for example. Edwards was the first person to represent Great Britain in the Olympic ski jumping event. Edwards, who had only practiced the sport for two seasons, qualified for the 1988 Winter Olympics in Calgary simply because he was the only one who applied. Edwards was 20 pounds heavier than the next heaviest competitor and was extremely nearsighted. His glasses fogged up so badly when he skied that he couldn't see. It was no surprise that Edwards finished last in his event. However, being a spectacular failure made Edwards more famous than many Olympic winners. After the Olympics, Edwards became a media sensation, appearing on talk shows around the world. Another Olympic athlete who gained fame for his lack of skill is Eric the Eel Musambani. Musambani was a swimmer from Equatorial Guinea who participated in the 2000 Summer Olympics in Sydney, Australia. Musambani had only started swimming eight months prior to the Olympics. Before he arrived at the Games, he had never even seen an Olympic-sized pool. Musambani was to compete against two other swimmers. Incredibly, both were disqualified for jumping into the pool before the start of the race. Eric struggled so badly to complete the 100-meter swim that some people worried that he might even be drowning. When Eric finally finished the race, the audience cheered wildly. It wasn't his time that impressed the spectators. After all, he finished a full minute behind any competitive time. It was his perseverance and determination that were so impressive. One. Every so often, an Olympic athlete becomes famous not for being athletically gifted, but for not being athletically gifted. 2. Take Eddie the Eagle Edwards, for example. 3. Edwards was 20 pounds heavier than the next heaviest competitor. 4. He wore his glasses even though they fogged up badly. 5. Eddie is easily the worst ski jumper that has ever competed in the Olympics. 6. Another example of an Olympic athlete who gained fame for his lack of skill is Eric the Eel Musambani. A country born on skis. Norway, a small country of 4.7 million inhabitants, has won more Winter Games medals than any other nation. 
it became the first country to win 100 Olympic gold medals and reached the 300 medal milestone in the Winter Games of 2010. Norwegians go cross-country skiing, ski jumping, or downhill skiing on weekends, on holidays, and after work. When the snow starts melting in spring, they move it up to the mountains. And if there is no access to snow, they skate on ice. 2,500 lit tracks all over the country make it possible for people to ski in winter, although it gets dark early. Norwegians have enjoyed skiing for thousands of years. A rock carving in Nordland County in the north provides evidence that the use of skis dates back to the Stone Age. Until about a century ago, skis were the only means of transport in winter and essential for hunting. Skiing did not become a mass sport until the mid-1880s, when the first competitions were arranged. Sandra Norheim, who is considered the father of modern skiing, was the originator of the Telemark skis, which are narrower in the middle than at the front and back and have stiff heel bindings. The shape made turning easier, and the heel binding allowed skiers to jump from rooftops or over rocks without losing their skis. Polar explorers made skis known internationally and demonstrated their unique merits on terrain that could not be crossed any other way. Roel Amundsen was the first man to reach the South Pole in 1911 on skis. Fridtjof Nansen crossed the Greenland interior on skis in 1880. Other explorers have followed the routes used by these two famous explorers and skied to both the North and South Poles. Annual cross-country events are organized throughout Norway, attracting a great number of participants. Such events are not restricted to athletes, but include keep fit categories that allow more people to participate. Enjoying the exercise in nature is as important as achieving the fastest time and winning prizes in these events. Biathlon was first included in the Winter Olympics program in 1960. It is a cross-country skiing race, interspersed with shooting contests. Norwegians are very strong cross-country skiers and have won most of the cross-country skiing medals in the Winter Olympics over the years. Alpine skiing has also gained a lot of followers, as has freestyle, which is a relatively newer sport. Norwegians are among the world's best in freestyle. Speed skating used to be a large spectator and participation sport on par with cross-country skiing. Cross-country skiing, ski jumping, and alpine skiing seem to have taken over and overshadowed speed skating, although Norwegian speed skaters are among the best in the world. In winter in Norway, every sheet of ice is covered with children playing hockey or skating. Indoor rinks are also used for skating and ice hockey. While other Scandinavians huddle around fireplaces, Norwegians bundle up and go out skiing. This could explain the reason why they have won such an astounding number of medals in the Winter Olympics. One, ice hockey is played on a rink that is 200 feet, 61 meters, long, and 85 feet, 26 meters, wide, with painted lines to indicate various zones. The area behind the blue line of a team side is called its defending zone. The area behind the opponent's blue line is the attacking zone, and the area between the blue lines is the neutral zone. 
there are two sets of goalposts at either end of the rink, with a net attached behind them. The red line between the two posts is the goal line. The area in front of the goal is called the crease. 2. Each team has three kinds of players. Three forwards, the center and two wingers, two defensemen, and a goaltender. 3. The objective of the game is to score goals by shooting the puck, a hard rubber disc, into the opponent's net. The players control the puck with a long stick curved at one end. They also wear a lot of padding and helmets to avoid getting hurt. 4. Players are not allowed to use their hands in order to redirect the puck or pass it to their teammates unless they are in the defensive zone. They may redirect the puck with any other part of their bodies, but not kick it. 5. The boards surrounding the ice keep the puck in the rink and are used to body check opponents, i.e., push them against the boards in order to stop their progress. Play can also be stopped if a goal is knocked out of position. It is then restarted with a face-off, i.e., two players face each other on the ice and try to gain control of the puck that an official drops to the ice. 6. If an offensive player interferes with a goaltender's defense, he is given a penalty and sent to the penalty box for two to five minutes.